we're going to take a look at ProPresenter Control, which gives you access to monitor and control ProPresenter from remote computers in a lightweight browser-based interface. This means you can have a second or third or even more sets of hands and eyes on your presentations. And this opens up a ton of new possibilities and options for your team. So let's dive in and see what you can do and how to take advantage of ProPresenter Control. To get started, we need to first make sure that network access is enabled inside ProPresenter. So we'll do this by going to ProPresenter, Preferences, and then we're gonna go to our Network Preferences. Here you can see where you can enable network. And then you'll see your port and IP address that we need to be able to connect ProPresenter and ProPresenter Control. So I'm gonna copy my port, and then I need to remember this IP address. Now this is gonna be different on your computer as well as the port will be different. But on my computer, it's 192.168.11.103. Then we can go to a web browser and go to control.propresenter.com. Here we can insert that IP address and port. So I'm going to paste my port in and then I'm going to type in that IP address, which was 192.168.11.103. Again, this will be different on your computer. So just type in whatever the IP address and port are that are listed inside ProPresenter. And then we can hit connect and this will bring us to ProPresenter Control. Now the other way that we can access ProPresenter Control is back inside ProPresenter. So all we need to do is go to View and down to ProPresenter Control. This will automatically open a browser and bring you to ProPresenter Control. But this page is only for local access on the same computer because this is utilizing the local host. If you wanted to share this URL with somebody on another device, you need to change local host to the IP address that we typed in earlier. So 192.168.11.103, and that's gonna bring us to that same ProPresenter control page, but this address can be used on any device on your local network. Because it's important to remember that this remote control is of a local ProPresenter computer on your local network. So whatever device you're using to connect to your ProPresenter computer needs to be on the same local network. So that IP address we were typing in is the IP address of the ProPresenter computer on your local network. Now here is that ProPresenter control interface which works on desktop and mobile devices and doesn't require any extra graphics outputs or computing power from your presentation computer. So everyone can take advantage of this tool no matter what system you have ProPresenter running on. Now in the top left, you'll see that we have our looks here so we can toggle and switch between different looks and see which look is currently active. We can start and stop our live streams. We can control our physically connected displays by by toggling our screen control on and off here so we can easily do that. We can also control the playback progress on the announcements and presentation layers. And then down here, you'll see all of your macros. So any macros you have set up, so I have some lighting macros or I have my music and uh, talking macro which do uh, audience looks and stage screen changes all in one click. And so you could switch those there. And you can see your current playlist in all of the presentations and which presentation is currently active in that playlist. Uh, we can change our stage screen layouts for each stage screen that we have created and we can send stage messages. We can control audio and audio playlists. We can see our timers. We can start them and see where they're currently running. We have control of our props and we have system time and we have all of our messages down here so we can toggle between different messages and show those and adjust them. Now let's take a look at some practical ways that you can utilize ProPresenter Control. First, if you have a producer or someone in your production environment that keeps tabs on the event, you can give them access to see exactly what's going on and even take control when they need to. So let's say we're finishing up some music and we're about to move on to hosting, which begins with a video file. When our ProPresenter operator clicks on that video file in that presentation, our producer will see all of those changes. They'll see that this presentation is currently active, they'll see which video file is playing and the progress of that video file. The producer can even pause that video file and if it's a rehearsal, they could skip maybe to the last 30 seconds of the video to practice maybe the transition from that video into the live host who's about to come on stage. So they can take over control as they're practicing during rehearsal. Now, as the ProPresenter operator clicks through the rest of the presentation, you'll see, oh, now there's this JPEG image that's 
that's being shown. And that slide actually had a macro that started a timer. So now we can know exactly how long the host is on stage. And if we needed to send a message to the host on stage, they could use the stage message feature to send a message to the person on stage. Now this requires that your stage layout has an object that is linked to the stage message. So let's look at how to set that up real quick. So back inside ProPresenter, I'm going to go to more in the main toolbar and I'm going to go to the stage editor. Then we can select our screen preview, which was the layout that we're currently using, and we're gonna add that object in. So we're gonna click on add, and we're gonna go down and add a stage message object. Now you'll see this has added a text box that is linked to the stage message text, whatever we're gonna send from ProPresenter Control. Now a couple things I like to do to make this a little bit more obvious for anyone who would see this on a stage screen is go to our shape settings and add a fill so it stands out from the background, make that like a dark red, and then we're gonna set the visibility so it only shows if the stage message has text. So we're gonna choose the slide object of stage message and say has text. So this will only show if we're sending a message to that object. If it doesn't have any text, it's not gonna show that. And we can maybe go back to our text settings and make our text way bigger. So we'll set that to like 90 point and now that's ready to go for us. So now we can go back to show and we can see our stage display here and it looks exactly the way we want it to. Now, if we go back inside of ProPresenter Control, we can move this over and we can add a message in here. So we could say hello and hit show and you'll see how that shows up right inside ProPresenter. And when I hit hide, it will disappear. This is also really handy for video switchers because now they can control different features and even show like lower thirds on their live stream without having to ask the ProPresenter operator. So here we can see ProPresenter Control and we can see some of the ProPresenter interface just so we can see how these two things interact together. Now, if your video switcher wants to start a live stream or start a capture, they can just go to the capture and streaming settings and hit start here. And it will show you where it's being recorded to or streamed to, how long it's been going and what the current status is. But it will also show your ProPresenter operator so they can know how long the stream's been going or that there is a live stream happening. And then if we stop it inside control, it'll remove that so our operator knows that there's no live stream happening anymore. Now, another thing that video switchers or video producers typically do is they'll show a title anytime somebody is being shown on a live stream. And these are usually set up as props inside of ProPresenter. And so you'll see here, I have this Brad prop, which I created inside Photoshop. And it's just a PNG image with some transparency with my title. And the video switcher now can just click on that prop and they can show that title. And then whenever they want to remove it, they can just click it again and it will remove that prop. So gives them full control to show and hide titles whenever they want. Another way that we can show titles is by using messages. So if we scroll down, we'll see our message area here. If I click here, we can see all of the different messages that you have created. So I've created a few different ones here, like a kid's alert, and then this name one. So I created this name one, and it's looking for one value for a name. And so whatever value we put in here is gonna be sent to ProPresenter, and then ProPresenter is gonna use a theme to format that text, and then it will show it. So let's show this and see how that works. So it's sending Brad Zimmerman to ProPresenter and then it's using a theme to format it. And then I set it up to automatically remove after 10 seconds. So it's going to remove that title after 10 seconds. But like I said earlier, this is dynamic. So we can type in a different name here and hit show. And now it's going to show Nancy Smith instead of Brad Zimmerman. That's the power of messages that you can change these throughout the show. And these are really simple to set up. So let's just see how I built this. So if we go back over here and click on messages, you'll see my name message and I added one token for name. So that's the information that we're entering inside of ProPresenter Control. And then down here is where we select a theme. So I created a theme and then selected it, but we could use a stock one. So we'll go use this, uh, this lower third presentation point one, and we can even change how long this is shown. So I have it set for 10 seconds, but we could change it to five.
And then we can hop back over inside of ProPresenter Control and we could hit Show here or the Show button in the bottom corner of the ProPresenter interface. And now we can show that title and it's gonna show it with that new theme and then it's gonna automatically remove it after five seconds. Also, your audio engineers could easily take advantage of this by loading up Control in a web browser on their mobile device, and then they can now start and stop different audio playlists. So if you wanted to take control of audio, you can just scroll down and you could start a playlist. You can even choose between your different playlists. And so I'll just start that first audio track and you'll see how it's starting here inside ProPresenter. And again, we get playback controls here where we can pause that if we need to and we can start that back up immediately. Now you can see how you can monitor and control ProPresenter from multiple locations via your local network. And all of these use cases help put the control of ProPresenter into the hands of the people who need it most, instead of asking one operator to do it all. And remember, you can find more video training about all the features mentioned in this video at ProPresenter.com.